Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be discussing about rate limiting APIs in Node.js and Express application. Now I'm very sure, you know, most of us understand how to build API endpoints, how to build API calls on the server. Our API can be built using several kind of languages, but in our own case for this tutorial, we're going to be looking at building um, a rate limiting process in a Node.js Express application. Now, just to give you more insight of what rate limiting means. Now, if you have visited an application whereby when you make an API call, you know, for like, let's say 10 times, 20 times, 50 times, you are unable to make more calls. It tells you like too much request. You know, it tells you too much request within a particular short period of time. That's because a limit has been placed on that API call. And the reason why limits are placed on API calls is because when you make an API call publicly accessible without any limit, it could result to overloading your memory because you know that same call is being made on and on and on. It could result to inefficiency of your application. Your application could you know get slowed down, your server could slow down and cost you more cost and all of that. Now, the major goal for rate limiting your API is because it gives some kind of check whereby you are telling a user, you are telling anyone who is interfacing with your API calls that you can make requests to these APIs, but you have a particular limit which you have to get to. And once you get to that particular limit, further calls cannot be made until a particular period of time. And that's what we're going to be showcasing in this tutorial, the whole process of having to implement the limit process in the API, which is basically the rate limiting we're talking about. I haven't explained all of that. Let's dive straight into you know the practical approach as usual, which is basically me showing you how to implement all of that you know within your code base and yeah that's basically what we're going to be doing today so join me on this journey of implementing rate limiting within a node.js and an express application i'm going to be setting up a new project folder for the whole rate limiting implementation which we want to do on this in this video if you want the complete version of the code which you know you want to look at and you know check it through while we implement this you can check in the, in the link in the description below but if you want to follow one step at a time while i implement this then you can also follow the same process which we're going to be doing in this video now the first thing i'm doing here is i've created a folder called rate limiting node and basically i'm just going to open this folder in the terminal here and um, the first thing i will be doing here is just to run i'm going to create a new file let me just create a new file inside of here called index.js and when i create the index.js then i'm just going to run npm init y just to generate a package.json file for us and right now there's nothing inside of the package.json but we have to you know install dependencies which we'll be working with now we're going to take this one step at a time the first step would basically be setting up a normal api without rate limiting implementation then once we set up the normal api and it's working fine then we can now bring in the whole rate limiting process but we're not going to be setting something so um, big just a very simple one endpoint which we're going to be dealing with just for the sake of this video now the, the i'm going to be using yan and for me to work with yan i'm going to add some dependencies one of the dependencies which i'm going to be adding into our code base would be express because i'm going to be working with express i'm also going to be adding course so i'm going to add those two packages first and why they you know why they install uh, I'm, if you check now we should be having course and express as our packages in the dependencies i'm also going to add um dot emv which is basically just for us to make use of environmental variables and um, that's basically what we're going to be working with for now then one more thing i'm going to be adding would be the i'm going to be adding nodemon just for us to restart our server automatically when we're on development mode which is basically what we'll be using here so that we don't have to you know keep quitting the server and restarting it now we've been able to add all of these you know packages which we need in our application now the next thing that we'll be doing here is just create a an emv file and inside of the emv file i'm just going to specify the port which we'll be working with now inside of the index file i'm just 
now we're going to set up like you know uh, an express app but since that's not our major um, goal i'm going to be very quick with that so it's just for us to set up express require express then i'm just going to copy this from where i already have it so that we can you know get going very fast then i'm going to have all of this copied and pasted here then I'm also going to add one thing is missing in this my stuff, which is basically cost. We have to require cost. Then we also have to, you know, put a try cache just to listen to the application. So I'm just going to put a try cache. And if there's an error, I'm just going to process dot exit. And if there is no error, I'm oh, sorry, not here. If there is no error then i want to you know let you know the server is live so i'm just gonna go server is live at port you know so we're gonna have that now just for us to test this to be sure it's working fine okay so i need to do this first we need to have i'm just gonna specify a cost option um just to make this very quick uh for now we don't need all of these we can just specify our origin as you know a wild card which means we can accept requests from anywhere for now so we're going to use app.use express json then we're also going to have app.use we're going to have course inside of here just to let express know one to make use of course now the next thing will be get app.get then request response and inside of here i just want to rest dot send welcome to our rate limiting application so now this is what we have here just to test this i'm gonna run yarn okay before i run yarn something is missing here which is basically in the start in the script we need to have what we call the start script and here i'm just gonna have node index.js and for the development i'm gonna have nodemon which is why we installed nodemon so that we can be able to just do yarn run dev and i think now we should be having server is listing in on port 7000 that's what we have at the moment so just for us to be sure we'll go straight to the server here and just do localhost 7000 oh, 7, no sorry 7100 okay that's not we're having a break then here it says Okay, so I guess this is where we have the issue. We omitted this, so we're supposed to list in support. That was a very funny error, which is not supposed to be. <laughs> so yeah, we're supposed to have the console. That was an issue. That was an error from my own end. I skipped that. So now if we run this again, we have local seven one zero zero, and if we go straight to the local host here and reload this. You know we get this welcome to our rate limiting application now this is where rate limiting comes into play if you notice this just for us to test this also in our postman you would see that if i make this request you know i get this thing if i make the request again make the request again continuously you know i keep getting response all the time but imagine that this could be overloading my memory it might not really count currently because it's just a 341 byte response size but imagine this is like a chunk of data that is being returned all the time and you know you keep making requests every minute or imagine someone is crawling your application from you know a crawling app using maybe puppeteer or something to extract data from your application every minute and this person keeps taking all the data every minute you know that's something that is not really really ideal and professional so how do you bring in rate limiting in your node.js now there's a package called um there's a package called rates limiter flexible 
if you go to npm and check the package if you just do npmjs.com and you check for rate limiter flexible so i'm just going to search that just to show you what this is so i'm going to have rate limiter flexible now this is a package in node.js that allows you to implement rate limiting you know in your application and yeah it's basically allows you to limit the number of actions protects you from DDoS attack, you know, brute force attack and other kind of stuffs. You could also work with Redis, Memcache, MongoDB, MySQL, Postgres, and all of that. But that's not, you know, that's not where, that's not our focus. Our focus is basically bringing this package, using it inside of our application. Now, to bring this package, I'm just going to die the server, kill the server, and I'm going to add the package rate flexible rate limiter flexible rate limiter flexible now the package is going to get installed and the first thing we want to do is create a middleware folder and the middleware folder i'm just going to create a, fo a file inside of it called rate limiter check.js you know i'm going to create a file inside of the folder as in the middleware folder I'm just going to name this rates limiter middleware.js. Now, inside of here is where we're going to have all of the whole implementation done. Now, I'm going to take from the code that we already have. And I'm going to send this and paste this here just to explain what each of those steps does. Now, if you're going to take this code, put it inside of here. And I'm going to explain what each of these things does. So at the first step, we are requiring the package, which is the first thing we have to do. And we're setting some constants. The first one is we're setting the maximum request limit to 10, which basically means once you make that API call 10 times consecutively, when you try to make it the 11th time, you get, a, you get a, an error message telling you too many requests. That's what you get. Now, the max request window is the time it takes before you can be able to, you know, retry a particular API call again. Now, this option you have here is basically just an instance that is being passed inside a, an option rather that is being passed inside the rate limiter memory instance that is being created here. So this is basically the line 12 is basically creating a new rate limiter memory instance and passing the options here as an option and the option consists of the duration and the points now this is the function itself which is the middleware itself that you know sets each of these thing in your header that's the response header it sets the retry after does the whole calculation it sets the limit which is basically the max request limit which is this one it also sets the rate limit remaining and you know rate limit reset then if there's an error it tells you too many requests you know that's the message you get now this is what we need and the only thing we need to do is in the index.js file the first thing we would have to do is basically to import or require that middleware which we've created inside of here and that's basically you getting this and the first thing we'd have to do here is const require. Then we're going inside of middleware rate limiter and we're calling the function which we created. So rate limiter middleware, that's the function we created. And now we have to allow our express application use that. So we have to do app.use rate limiter middleware. So now we have this and let's try to restart our application yarn run dev and when we start our application and try to make an api call now we're just going to do some counting we're making an api call 10 times this is the first one the second one the third one now you notice that in the headers all of those things that we added in the headers is there we've made three calls and we're left with seven calls now we make one more we're left with six calls 
So which means we can only make this API call six more times. We'll make one more, we're left with five calls. Now let's just you know, make it five more. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're left with no calls. So which means we're not supposed to get a response when we try to make a new call again because we've exhausted the number of rates that is remaining and we can only make a call after a particular period of time. So if we try to make a new call again, you now get a message telling you too many requests. And this is basically just the practical implementation of how to do and how to go about this. Now this way you can be able to limit anybody, be it a normal user, be it a web crawler, be it a web scraper, Anybody who is trying to extract data from your server or from your API or from your database or whatever it is, you can be able to limit that person to a particular number of calls that the person is meant to make within a particular period of time. So for example, if you want the person to be accessible to just five calls at a time, so which means once the person makes the first call, the second call up to the fifth call, he no longer has access to make that call until a particular period of time before he or she could now you know make a new access which is basically going to be another five new calls if you want to limit the person to making 100 calls all you just need to do is specify the number of call you want the person to have here if you want to make it 100 all you just need to do is specify 100 and that way the person gets access to make 100 calls and by the time he or she tries to make the hundred and first call you know, it gets that error. If you want to limit the person to just 10 calls, the same thing happens. You come in here, you set 10. Once the person makes 10 calls and try to make the 11th call, he or she gets that same error message. And now, having explained all of that, we've seen the practical approach. Why is rate limiting needed in an API? Now, the beauty of rate limiting is, it, like, like the package says, it prevents you from attacks. It prevents you from, you know, external parties scrolling into your application and extracting your data continuously. That way you can place several form of checks. And that's the high level overview of what middleware does. Middleware, you know, puts in some checks within your application. This is something very small, very simple. If we have other API, you know, endpoints in our application, which we just showcased, we're having just one endpoint. But in a case where we might have, 10, 20, 50 endpoints. It's the same process that you just need to follow. The only difference there is that you might want to do it to suit your own business logic. Like for example, if you want someone to be able to, you know, make multiple calls like 100, 200, you just have to specify that in there and that's basically all. But every other steps that is that has been done, you know, it's the same process. And that's basically how to implement rate limiting within an API. If you feel you have any questions, drop them in the comment section and I'm going to attend to them on the comment section. I haven't explained all of this. If you want to, you know, do the same thing in your application, you want to be able to implement all of that in your application, feel free. You can make references to the code base. It's, on, it's available on GitHub. The link is going to be in the description below and you can be able to, you know, walk yourself through the same process of how we implemented this within your own application. Haven't explained all of this. Thank you for listening. We're going to see in the next video.